Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In my previous video called the Ultimate Harbor Freight Tire Changer Modifications, I showed a quick clip of my modified Harbor Freight bead breaker in use. I just wanted to take a minute to go over the modifications I did to the bead breaker to make it much more user friendly. The first and most important thing I find with the tire changer and the bead breaker itself is going to be securing it down to the floor. Now I came up with a system that works with one set of mounting points for both machines. You can mount your tire changer and your bead breaker to the floor in the same way. Uh, rather than have some posts sticking up out of your concrete, I find it's best to use these drop-in wedge anchors. I uh, used a 3 8 inch size. Uh, you could probably get away with a half inch. I'm not sure if the holes in the bottom of the tire changer are quite big enough for a half inch, but 3 8 seems to work fine for me. And I drilled the holes based on the tire changer itself. Now to hold down the bead breaker, I took a piece of one and a half inch angle iron. I believe this is actually just some bed frame I had. And I drilled some holes that mounted to the same holes as the two closer locations of the tire changer. And then once I have this done and drilled and I set it up, you can just take it and slide it through the opening right there and then run a couple 3 8 inch bolts down to hold it down to the floor. Having this more solidly mounted makes it much more easy to use. Before I was actually taking my van and pulling the tire up on the corner of this and it just didn't work out so great but um, once you do this it makes it much better to use one of the modifications i did was to go ahead and weld these three locations and make the stand a lot more rigid and a lot more solid one of the most noticeable improvements was going to be extending the handle i first started out with about five feet of three quarter inch diameter tubing and I ran it through the inside all the way to the end of the handle. I welded the tubing that I put inside to the handle on the outside. And then for this top section, I just used a piece of three quarter inch black pipe because I had some around. Uh, three quarter inch black pipe has an inner diameter of about three quarters and the outer diameter is one inch. So basically anything with around a, a one inch outer diameter, eighth inch wall would work fine and I slid that over top and I welded it with a little bit of a gap between the two. I welded it to the tubing and then I welded the two welds together to make it nice and stiff. At this end I found that I was getting without any kind of reinforcement I had some bend going on so I went ahead and I put a piece of one by one angle iron eighth inch thickness behind the two new pivot points. Uh, the two points are just some some tubing I had around with a little bit over a quarter inch diameter hole that are welded in place. I started out by putting this one in and I found out that it was a little too far back and it was nicking the edge of the wheel. So I moved it about an inch and a half farther forward and this seemed to work out perfect. Originally with the mounting point here I found that you were getting way too much of an angle. You couldn't get a good downward force. You don't want to be perfectly straight because that's when you start nicking the wheel so just there's a little bit of a, a cant to it and it comes in and it takes the wheel the tire right off the bead. That's all that there is to it for a little bit of my time and just with some supplies I had around the shop I changed this from a usable but very frustrating tool into something that works much much better. So guys if you like what you see don't forget to like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.